friends, and welcome back to this week's Norman News. I'm Grace Suomi. And I'm Jason Maybaum. Stay tuned for news on a polio outbreak in New York City. And more on Picture Day. Around the school in 30 minutes, this is the, the Norman, Norman News. news. Hello Normans, New York Governor Kathy Hochul has declared a state of emergency in numerous New York counties due to a recent polio outbreak. The virus calls for paralysis in the arms and legs and in even more severe cases, even death. The polio virus has been de detected in multiple wastewater samples in counties in New York State, suggesting a spread among those who are not vaccinated against the virus. Officials say that the virus is circulating among those unvaccinated with hundreds of cases unaccounted for. While the virus is not largely accounted for in California, make sure that you have been vaccinated against polio and make sure that you are staying safe if you are planning on traveling to New York anytime soon. Now to Jason with School News. Thanks, Grace. Normans, Wednesday, September 14th is Picture Day. The pictures will be taken in the Media Center in room and B1, room 150, instead of the EDC. Photos will be taken during 9th and 10th grade English and 11th and 12th grade history. If you end up missing your time to take your picture, makeups will take place on October 6th at the same location. Get ready for your close-up, Normans. Now to Natalie with more school news. September 19th through September 23rd. Monday is Shades Day, so come to school in your favorite pair of sunglasses. Tuesday is Tie-Dye Day, and Wednesday is Fitness Day. Wear your favorite athletic gear. Thursday, wear your favorite band t-shirt, and Friday, September 23rd is Decades Day. Freshmen dress in 2000s wear, sophomores in 90s outfits, juniors wear an 80s theme, and seniors dress like you're, from, you're in the 70s. The homecoming football game will be on Friday, September 23rd at 7 p.m. Go show your support to the Normans. The homecoming disco dance will be on September 24th from 7 to 10 p.m. Now to Eden with international news. Thanks, Natalie. It has been months since conflict started between Russia and Ukraine. Still, Putin is not ready to back down. Putin has declared that Russia would press on with its military action in Ukraine. We will not supply gas, oil, coal, heating oil. We will not supply anything, Putin said in a defiant speech last week. As punishment for the Russian invasion, which was meant to capture the capital of Kiev and topple the government and President Zelensky, Western powers have imposed an extraordinary amount of economic sanctions and government measures aimed at Russia's crushing economy. But the results have fallen short as energy prices soared and Russia redirected sales of gas and oil to Asia. It is uncertain whether Russia or the Western forces will back down first. But for now, you can expect increasing gas and oil prices. Now to Akira with National News. Thanks, Eden. Wildfires in Oregon have quadrupled in size since last week with threatened thousands of homes and draped the Intersect 5. The Cedar Creek fire started during a lightning storm on August 1st, which grew to nearly 86,000 acres. The fire breached exiting lines, meaning containment dropped to 0%. The fire threatens more than 2,000 homes and hundreds of commercial buildings, officials said, mostly in the nearby towns of Oak Ridge and Westford, which have combined population of about 30,500 residents. Late last week, high temperatures and dry conditions fed the fire, fueling its growth from 18,000 acres on Wednesday to more than four times that. Um, Oregon Governor Kate Brown declared a state fire emergency, allowing the state's fire marshal to support local firefighting agencies. The mountain area affected by the Cedar Creek fire is mostly with the Willamette National Forest, a popular recreation destination with lakes and trails. Not to Nora with local news. Thanks, Akira.
Shakira to honor the lives that were lost on September 11th, 2001, Beverly Hills held its annual ceremony at the 9-11 Memorial Garden from 5.30 to 6. The cere ceremony featured the BHHS Magical Singers in a wreath laying. Mayor Lily Bossy, city council members, and the Beverly Hills Fire Department attended the event. The BH 9-11 Memorial Garden is open every day and is available to anyone who would like to visit or remember their lost loved ones. Now to Ariane and Mickey with sports. Thank you, Nora. Hi, Nora Nation. I'm your host, Ariane Naeem, and welcome back to Pro Sports. Football season is back and your local Rams took a hit losing 31 to 10 against the Bills. We'll see them be playing again this upcoming Sunday against the Falcons. The Los Angeles Chargers did win 24 to 19, setting them on a good start for the season. For college football, UCLA crushed its game 45 to seven against Alabama State. And USC also won 41 to 28 to Stanford. In Major League Baseball, the Dodgers destroyed the Padres this past weekend, eight to four and 11 to two. Good luck to them against the Diamondbacks and the Giants. LA Galaxy tied their game with Nashville this past weekend, one to one. Now to Miki with School Sports. Thank you, Ariane. <laughs> Good morning, Normans. I'm Miki Annabim coming to you with this week's School Sports. This week's football game is away against Whittier Christian School. If you see any players in the halls, make sure to wish them luck and let them know they are supported. Boys Water Polo has an away game today against Brentwood and another away game tomorrow against Culver City. Two very tough matches. Girls Volleyball has three games this week. Tuesday against Morningside, Thursday against Inglewood, and Friday against Fairfax. Finally, Girls Tennis has a home game on Tuesday and away game at Torrance on Thursday. Good luck, Beverly, and go Normans! Now to Deborah with entertainment. Thank you, Mickey. September 9th to 12th is the famous season New York Fashion Week. This fashion industry event is an opportunity for designers or houses to showcase their 2023 spring collection. Typically, designers invite fashion bloggers, influencers, known celebrities, and workers in PR. Fashion Week is a seasonal event which takes place in different fashion capitals starting in the month of September. The first shows were hosted in New York, then to London on September 16th. After the showcase in London, Fashion Week is going to be moved to Milan on September 20th, and then finally concluding Fashion Week in Paris on the 26th of September. The fashion trends for next year are soon to be seen, and there's hope to see new rises in various styles next spring. Now let's send it back to this week's Field Report. Thank you, Julia. The classic go-to Halloween movie, Hocus Pocus, is back for round two. 
29 years later, three high school schoolers, Be Becca, Izzy, and Cassie, are said to have an epic birthday sleepover. But when the infamous black candle crosses their path, they accidentally summon the Sanders sisters back to pr present day Salem. To prevent the witches from unleashing mayhem on the innocent town, the three girls must battle the ravenous witches before dawn at All Hallows Eve. Will the young girls save their town and themselves? Tune in this September 30th to find out. Now let's sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's movie trailer. I banish thee from Salem <gasps> forever. They were right to fear thee. Magic has a way of uniting. Happy 16th birthday, child. I have a gift uh, for my favorite customers. Um, anyway, so this mofo... Legend has it, it's on the 16th Milo birthday that a witch gets her powers. Follows, Milo follows him on Instagram. I'm one person away from my Lock up your children! Yes, Salem, we're back! Gilbert? Where did you get that candle? We have to get out of here. The witches will be here any second. Ah! The, the book is alive! He woke up? <gasps> If we intend to live past sunrise, we have to steal their souls. Whoa, 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 wait, can we talk about this? No. <laughs> we must fly! We run amok! Not freak out. The eventual maniac obsessed with getting revenge on Salem. So we should get some salt. Why? So we taste better when they eat us? Spread out. Sisters! That's not six feet under. and I can't wait to go check it out. Go get your tickets for Hocus Pocus 2 today. Now let's send it to Chloe and Sophia with an interview. Hi, my name is Sophia Sabian. Hi, I'm Chloe and Ronnie, and today we're talking about Queen Elizabeth's death. So unfortunately on Thursday, September 8th, Queen Elizabeth II died on, at Balmore Castle in Scotland for summer retreat, and she was only 96 years old. What are your opinions on this, Sophia? Honestly, it's just really upsetting to hear the news of her death, but also it's very cool to discover how long she lived. And um, she was just a really great example of how to behave as a public figure. And not only that, she was a living example of behaving in a way that almost set an example for everyone around her. So, Chloe, who discovered her sudden death? According to the New York Times, the royal family announced her death online, reporting that she had died peacefully but their announcement did not specify the death in detail. So now that the queen actually passed, King Charles is becoming a new monarch, and what does he address? On Friday morning, King Charles addressed that he'll take over the, his mother's position and be his heir to the throne. Thank you guys for watching. Now back to the desk. Thank you, and welcome back to this week's episode of Restaurant Reviews by Cami. This week, I'm going to review an iconic Los Angeles fast food hotspot, In-N-Out. Famous for over 80 years, In-N-Out has been serving burgers, fries, and shakes with inexpensive prices and amazing quality, making this an extremely popular place with children, with children and adults alike. I went to the Westwood location on Friday night, and as usual, the crowd was ginormous. However, service was prompt, and I received my food within 10 minutes. I ordered animal style fries and a cheeseburger. Animal, animal fries are fries of cheese, grilled onions, and their special sauce. The cheeseburger is like any other cheeseburger, however, it's extra good. I thoroughly, thoroughly, <laughs> I really enjoy the ambiance and the vast availability of indoor dining seats. No matter how busy in and out gets, there will always be an abundance of seats available for your whole party. The entirety of the staff is welcoming and kind, which is always appreciated. The food is famous for a reason, it's incredible. I highly recommend In-N-Out to anyone if you have not tried it. 
While I didn't order one this time, I also do recommend trying their vanilla milkshakes. They're also incredible. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's segment of Restaurant Reviews by Cami. Now to Matthew with Gaming. Thank you, Cami. Cult of the Lamb has been the most recent indie game to gain such notoriety so quickly. The story is fairly simple. You play as the Lamb, an individual who's about to be sacrificed to appease the gods of the old faith, before being sent to an entirely separate dark god known as the one who waits. The one who waits. The very non-suspicious chained up demon god grants you power and life in exchange for the small favor of, st of starting a cult in his name. You then revive and begin your journey of gathering followers, creating a fully functioning society and or cult, and dismantling the four pillars of the old faith. The story is simple but fun, and isn't really the selling point of the game, and doesn't really need to be that much of a note. Cult of the Lamb is a city builder in the style of Animal Crossing, and a dungeon crawler in the style of Binding, Li of, Binding of Isaac. In the dungeon crawler segments, you will travel into the lands of the old faith, and kill all the enemies in alternating rooms, being rewarded for clearing a level of a dungeon before getting to a boss at the end of the dungeon. You will pick up weapons and spells that change how you approach each combat encounter as you progress. This is where you will gather followers and resources to help further your cult development. And that's where the real game begins. You will be guiding your cult through to prosperity through having them build, gather food, and worship you as the almighty savior that you are, and disturbing arcane rituals and demonic sacrifice. All is in the repertoire of Cult of the Lamb, this also includes babysitting, inducting new members, and making them happy, and eliminating blasphemous non-believers, either through convincing them the, or the gold fashioned way of, Timmy? Who's Timmy? And if you don't stop talking about him, you're going to the same place he is right now. The game's alternating segments prevent the game from getting stale, despite the simplistic and easy, na easy nature of both segments. This is all done with a genuinely, genuinely adorable art style, contrasting the cute, fuzzy animal people with the disgusting monstrosities and gore present throughout the game's content. The soundtrack is quite relaxing, but nothing I would listen to outside of playing the game. The game also has very tongue-in-cheek humor, so that despite this game's excessive gore and cosmic horror, you can still enjoy the simple things that the game provides rather than look too far into non-existent depth. The super disturbing imagery is often portrayed for laughs rather than to actually horrify the audience. It's not trying to be subversive or reinvent the wheel, simply have it turn in a new way. Cult of the Lamb is a fun and casual game that anyone can enjoy, and much like this review, this game is short, sweet, and enjoyable the whole way through. Now to Deborah with a field report.
Theodore Field report. The news has recently spread as of 10 minutes ago that Queen Elizabeth II, longest reign of England, has passed away at the age of 96. And we're going to ask the students of CHHS to see how they feel about it. No way! The Queen died! How do you feel about the Queen Elizabeth II dying as what? of 20 minutes ago? She died? Wait, you're lying. She yeah. actually died? Yeah. No they, way. They released the press this morning and they suspected her dying last night. <gasps> That's so depressing. My queen, I just saw her. I was in the UK. How do you feel about the death of Queen Elizabeth? Well, I mean, someone died, so it's sad but all things come to an end at some point. So I think we all knew silently that one day it was gonna happen. Thank you. Did you know that the Queen Elizabeth died? Yes, I found out before Deborah. <laughs> Honestly, it was bound to happen. She's so old. Yeah, and last night I saw a TikTok saying that the Bucking that like Buckingham Palace like stopped doing press releases last night. So I think they knew and they just like covered it up. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that Queen Elizabeth II died? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Um, very sad. I don't care. How do you feel about the Queen Elizabeth II dying as of like a few minutes ago the press was released? I didn't even know she passed away, but that is really sad. I have no idea. Thank you. Good. How do you feel about Queen Elizabeth II passing away as of this morning? I'm very sad about it. Um, I actually didn't know she passed away until you told me right now. So that's very sad to hear. That's so sad. Thank you. How do you feel about the Queen's death? Uh, I mean, she was kind of old, so the time was coming, but I just found out in the bathroom like two minutes ago. So that's fun. Thank you. How do you feel about the death of Queen Elizabeth II? Well, I'm impacted by this both as a history teacher and a citizen of the world. Um, you know, I think she's had a tremendous impact on the world as a female monarch and as somebody who was so dedicated. You know, she really was a person, a woman of, of duty and service to country. And it's a great loss today. You know, I was telling some students that she's one of very well known, you know, three queens in the history of England, the other two being Elizabeth I and Victoria. So, tremendous loss to the world today. Thank you. And go William. <laughs> How do you feel about the death of Queen Elizabeth II? I mean, I'm an American, right? Smoking on the Queen Pack, which y'all know. All right, this is big ups for America here. So, on a real note, though, that's very sad. Um, you know, she, she was a queen know much about her but she's a queen so like you know pr prayers up for her does she have husband does she have like if she has children i mean like sorry for them i mean i know uh i know the uk and all of them are like probably really upset right now so did you know that the queen died yes because um my best friend is british her name's julie eagleton and uh, she lives in the Cotswolds. I've known her for over 20 years, and she's been keeping me abreast of all the information. And, I, and for uh, the whole world, I think the whole world is probably sad about this. The Queen has had the most amazing reign of any monarch in history, 70 years. And the British people, I think, are in generally, they, they love the Queen and they're devastated. So it's a, it's a sad day, I think, for everyone. Thank you. How do you feel about the death of Queen Elizabeth II? Oh, um, I, it was very shocking because I literally just heard about it. But at this point, she was old. Not that I'm saying good lucky her, but um, I don't know, at least it's something, something new is going to happen. Thank you. Well, how do you feel about the death of Queen Elizabeth II? Uh, personally, I think it was bound to happen eventually, but it's very sad for all the people of England and around the world. Um, may she rest in peace. Hopefully, um, somebody takes the power and does it rightfully and whatever. Thank you. How do you feel about Queen Elizabeth dying? Oh my God! Death. Queen Elizabeth just died. I. Oh my God! I don't really care. 
It's very sad how the queen just passed away. How old was she? 96? Yeah. Oh my god. Damn. We thank all the students and staff for their input on the loss of Queen Elizabeth II. And this is Devorah Cohen. This is Kate Yee. We'll see you next week. Hello Normans and welcome to this week's weather forecast for the week of September 12, 2022. Bringing an end to our overheated week this week in Beverly Hills, we will see cloudy skies with temperatures ranging from the low 80s to high 70s. Today we'll see a high of 82 and a low of 63. Moving on to Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll see highs of 80 degrees. Bringing us to Thursday and Friday when it will be 78. Finally, on Saturday and Sunday with continuous temperatures of 78. Thank you so much for watching this week's live weather forecast. I'm Natasha Jadi Dolahi and have a sunny week, Normans. Now, let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Natasha, and thank you for tuning in to this week's Norman News. I'm Grace Suomi. And I'm Jason Maybell. We will see you next week. week.